Hey, what's up, Dave? How you doing? Hi, Jorge. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Just want, just uh, sort of general here. How, how did the first day go? How, how were, how different was it than usual spring training out there in Camelback? So, uh, as far as kind of the mechanics of the day, uh, very similar. Um, you know, unfortunately, not or not fortunate, but we had to do meetings outside initially, which is different. And the biggest uh, difference is the, the no fans. Um, so I think the energy was good internally, but you just don't have that player fan interaction, uh, which was certainly missed. But guys got their work in, saw some good pens today. And uh, today was pretty uneventful, um, which I thought was a good thing. Do you expect your days to be just very similar to what they were, you know, the usual spring training days? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think that... Um, you know, considering what we went through last year, being mindful of keeping guys, uh, not keeping the guys on the field too long. Um, you know, having the fans here certainly helps. And so now just with the, being uh, mindful of the monotony um, and just making sure we just work smart and, and efficient. Do you have any guys who reported who are, you know, sideline injuries or any other reason? Um, there's a couple guys, uh, Mitchell White's a little sore. Um, you know, Joe Kelly's still coming back. Um, still, um, you know, just a little, he's not quite there yet, but um, but it's nothing kind of, nothing like a setback or anything like that. But as far as being active today, uh, Mitchell, uh, uh, Joe were in that bucket. Um, I think everybody else uh, was a full participant. What's wrong with Joe? No, just uh, there was just a little bit of playing catch, and it just kind of uh, got sore on him. His uh, arm got sore on him, so we just want to make sure that we sort of nip it right now. But but nothing of uh, really relevance. I just want to be honest. Hmm. And uh, is is there a challenge in going back to a you know 162 game season after going through that whatever that was last year, the kind of the craziness of last year? Is there a challenge in getting back to that? Yeah, I, I think there is. Um, I, I think that um, it, it's certainly unprecedented for for any team to, to kind of go from the 60 game to 162. Um, how players respond, will time will tell. Uh, but I do think that the depth that we have, um, you know, managing innings as far as on the field playing, uh, managing usage innings pitching, I think is really important. And how we do that, um, I, I really can't speak to that right now. Um, but certainly, I think it's going to be, a, a, um, it's not going to be, it's, it's going to be tough. I, I do believe that. Is there a challenge in, uh, you have seven qualified starters, um, guys who have done it at this level, at the major league level. Is there a challenge in, you know, there's five spots. Is there a challenge in getting those guys on board or, you know, any challenges that that may present? It's a surplus that most, I'm sure most managers would love. Yeah. You know, and I think that you can add Jimmy Nelson to that mix too. So that makes eight. Um, and I think that's a good thing. So right now, I think we're just going to look at it as we have eight um, viable starters, major league starters. And, you know, as the days, weeks kind of move forward, we'll know more. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Next question is from Kirsten Watson. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Dave. It's been almost four months now since you guys have won the World Series, and now you're back for spring training. How does it feel to be back together with the team preparing for this season? You know, um, it, it feels good to uh, be, be with the guys, be around the coaches. Um, I will tell you this is, you know, after winning game six, we didn't really get that chance uh, to celebrate together. And so, uh, granted, everyone from that team won't be here for the first day of full squad workouts, but I really am looking forward to getting everyone together uh, to congratulate everyone. Um, but just to kind of be back in uniform, watching players on the field again, to kind of uh, think back a little bit to 2020, but look out and look forward to 2021 is, is certainly exciting. And what's the focus for you and the team in these first few days of spring training? I think the thing um, for all of us is to um, get back into the swing of things, uh, limit injury, 
um, slowly kind of get our feet under us. And I think that nowadays, you know, guys are more prepared in spring training, but I still think that understanding we still have six weeks to go. So um, we slow play guys and make sure guys don't push too hard, too fast. Thank you. Yep. Let's try this again. Go ahead, David. Sorry, Dave. Technical issues worked out. No problem, Dave. Anything for you, man. <laughs> I was curious. You just talked about slow playing certain pitchers. In in the last couple of springs, you guys have slow played Walker. Is this going to be any different of a spring for him? Or do you feel like he may be more ready in spring than years past? So um, he will be more ready um, than in springs, springs in the past um, because he kept throwing throughout the the off season um, appreciating last year where it was a shortened season um, Walker just felt there were a lot of bullets, you know, left out there, left on the table. So for him to continue to throw uh, in the winter, keep his arm moving, uh, we'll prepare him best for 21. So he's done that um, through a bullpen today and looked very sharp, um, considerably more crisp uh, than he has in years past in bullpen number one. What do you believe he's learned about himself with the slow starts the last couple of years? Do you believe that he's learned to be more ready for this? I do. I, I do. Um, so it's, it's interesting because um, there's a slow start component and there's also the most important time of the year component where he's always uh, been at his best. Um, so obviously you've got to value the latter more. Um, but I think that with Walker's talent, he should have it both and start off well and finish well. Um, so I think that right now, uh, his openness to keep his arm moving all winter uh, shows that, speaks to that. I saw today on the team's Twitter account that Clayton arrived. Was there any doubt because of the snowstorm that's hitting Texas that he was going to be later than today? Yeah, we, we talked a few days ago and he was supposed to be out, you know, a normal report, um, but with the loss of power, can't get out. Um, obviously, he had to take take care of things and, and get out when it was safe. So, yeah, we expected him to be here at some point in time today. Okay, last one for me. As far as your bullpen goes, uh, do you feel like you have to define any roles as far as your closer today, or is that something that you'll decide as spring goes along. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I've, I've talked about it before, Dave, in the sense that um, I believe um, we're, at, we're at our best if Kenley is closing for us. Um, but with that said, uh, we have a lot of great viable options to finish a game. Uh, so right now, um, that's kind of where it's at. And Kenley looks fantastic. And, um, you know, as I sit here right now, I expect him to uh, close that first game out of the season. Next question is from Juan Torrivio. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Hey, Juan. Um, we saw Price and Vasilla through a bullpen session today. What can you kind of tell us or what you saw or heard from, from their session? So um, David was very, uh, very professional, very pro. I think he's thrown gosh, probably a half dozen pens already. And it was evident watching him throw the baseball today. Uh, the command was good, uh, used his entire mix. Um, and uh, Vessia, first time I put eyes on him. And uh, he's a guy that has really good delivery. And uh, he's a uh, spin rate guy. You know, he, he does a good job, you know, with the fastball locating at the top of the zone. So I thought today was a good pen, a good first impression for me. And then you mentioned kind of the workload for the starters. Is there an extra emphasis in managing David Price since he obviously didn't, didn't pitch last season? Yeah, you know, and I, I think that I don't know the exact, you know, numbers, but it's it's around 20 innings, I think, for David in the last couple of years. So, you know, so I don't know the answer right now, um, but David is very, you know, very in tune with his body. Uh, so there's going to be numerous conversations on what we all feel is best uh, as far as workload for David in 21. And, and I just don't know that answer right now. 
And the, the one more thing for me with, with Kenny, is that a conversation that you have with him in terms of, you know, we want you to be the closer, but it's not necessarily set in stone or, or how, how do you kind of go about that? Um, no, I, I haven't had that conversation with Kenny. I think that, um, you know, I think with the way that last year ended um, and I think that, um, you know, Kenley had a, Kenley had a really good year last year. Um, I think he, uh, you know, led major league baseball in, in soft contact off the bat. Um, I don't think he was pitching his best in the postseason, but, uh, this is a new year. Um, I expect him to have a great year. And so for me, I, uh, I think he's earned that, uh, opportunity to uh, start out as our closer, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I want the guys that uh, are pitching the best to finish the game, and and Kenley understands that too. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. Just uh, on the mechanics of getting everybody together this year, are guys required to quarantine? Are you getting intake testing similar to last year? Do you anticipate any problems? Yeah, there's a uh, there's an intake testing. There's uh, a 24 hour, I think, uh, quarantine. And then there's, uh, yeah, there's a couple other tests built that I'm not too clearly too familiar with, but the protocols that we're getting uh, from the, the people that know more than I do, uh, I know that we're adhering to it. Um, the masks um, under the roof, if you're not you know, active, um, the six feet social distancing, being mindful of that, um, just being really sanitary. Uh, but yeah, the intake testing and all that stuff we do. And last year you had a few guys who were late to the to the preseason because of not the passing the testing and stuff. Do you is there anything to worry about uh, yet on the radar? As of now, uh, no. Uh, I, I think that as I understand it from Ron Porterfield, we've, we've been pretty healthy. So as far as a pretty uh, like one hundred percent. So um, let's hope we keep that number. Feel free to knock on wood. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Next question is from Dylan Hernandez. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. How are you? Hi, Dylan. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, I guess just first of all, so have all the pitchers and catchers reported? Um, Cabert's not here. He's uh, He got hung up with his visa, so uh, we're working on getting him here, but he's not here. Then Clayton showed up today. Okay. Um, you know, they, on the uh, team's Twitter account, they showed, a, you know, there was like a short clip of you kind of giving a speech there, um, you know, and there it just kind of, right, you were kind of talking about last year, we just weren't going to be denied type of thing. I was just kind of wondering what the theme of maybe the, the larger theme of the, the speech was. I, I think, uh, you know, there's a certain uh, way we went about our business last year, and that's understanding the world of 2020 and things that we had to, we had no control over, but still had to stay focused on winning baseball games. And I thought we did a very good job of that. Um, and now when you look out to 2021, uh, not to be mindful of the things that we did very well, uh, and that'll aid in giving us the best chance to win another championship. Um, and also the fact that, you know, you can't win a championship in February. So a couple of things like that, Dylan, and, and, you know, it's not easy to repeat. There hasn't been a repeat winner since uh, 2020. So uh, getting ahead of that kind of mentality, I think is going to be beneficial for all of us. You know, you mentioned that, uh, right, the team really didn't get to celebrate last year. Uh, could you see you, you know, maybe organizing something for the guys this spring? You know, um, I'd like to think so. Um, it's still, um, I still, we have to be mindful of kind of, you know, I know we're all kind of in this together as far as testing and, and, and things like that. But yeah, it, it's certainly a thought in how logistically that could work. Um, I would certainly be up for that. And lastly, from me, uh, after you guys won the World Series, uh, did you allow yourself to open like a nice bottle of wine, uh, you know, for celebration? 
So I did. I I opened up a bottle of uh, I think it was 80, 89 or 90 uh, Margot. Um, so it's not like an awesome year, but it's still a pretty good year it was. And the bottle was uh, fantastic. I drank a ton of champagne. Um, but uh, I, I did. That was the one bottle I did. But um, I still haven't really commemorated um, 2020. So I'm still waiting on that World Series ring. It's a nice bottle. Well, thank you, Dave. All right, Dylan. Next question is from Eric Steven. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. Um, just wondering about the, the protocols. Um, given the distancing inside, do you have to split up? Uh, into like two clubhouses, use the minor league side? How does that work? Yeah, so we we do have, I think, uh, you know, call it 31 players on the minor league side and another, you know, 40 players here on the major league side. Uh, so the morning meeting, as you saw today, probably that we did it in the batting cage outside. Uh, but as far as the dressing, getting dressed, the kind of the end of the day, getting undressed, uh, two separate clubhouses to kind of minimize the numbers. And given, you know, you mentioned having eight viable starting pitchers. Do you think at some point this year you would use um, six man rotation like you did last year? Or was that mo mostly a function of the expanded rosters? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, to think about that um, at the outset, probably unlikely. Um, but you know it, it's not crazy, certainly, uh, given that we really don't know what to expect, you know, from playing a 162 versus 60 games. So uh, it is nice to have, you know, those eight viable starters. And at some point in time, I would expect uh, all those guys to make uh, a number of starts for us at some point anyway. Next question is from Mike Di Giovanna. Go ahead. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Hey, Mike. Hey, uh, so supposed to use a new baseball this year. It's not supposed to fly as uh, far. Do you feel like that could have any appreciable impact and how the game is sort of played, maybe even some strategy? Um, I, I don't think that, you know, in a vacuum, I don't think that that will totally have such a, uh, an effect that it'll be so noticeable. I don't think because I think then – you've got to layer in on, you know, there's times where we've had really warm uh, summers. Uh, then you're talking about still pitchers making pitches. But I do think that I haven't kind of, you know, dug too much into it, Mike, but um, I'm happy to see that. And there's been many pitchers in our camp that have uh, expressed their uh, feelings as far as last year's baseball being a lot harder and the, uh, strings wound a lot tighter than, you know, potentially this year. So it's, it's a welcome thing for the pitchers nonetheless. In general, would you like to see the game skew back a little toward more strategy, more contact, maybe some of the things that might come with a, uh, you know, a, a ball that doesn't carry as far? Yeah, I do. Because I think that I, I do, because I, I do think that, um, you know, the down and away uh, executed fastball that, is hit out the other way. I think that, you know, if a pitcher can't go down in a way, um, but the other side is, you know, pitching is, is ahead of the hitters with velocity and, and all this kind of stuff with the swing and miss. So um, that's a, that's a debate that can go round and round, but I certainly think that the ball variance and, and kind of allowing for it to carry less is, is a good thing. All right. Thanks. Got a question from Claudia Gastro. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. How are you? <laughs> just, just real quick. I'm just wondering uh, how is Julio Urias doing, and is he going to throw a bullpen session sooner? Yeah, I, I think Julio is scheduled tomorrow, and uh, I'll say that this is as good uh, physically as he's looked on day one of spring training. So, very proud of what he did this this off season. We got time for one more. Go ahead, Alden. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, Alden. Hey, sorry about that earlier. Um, just in terms of that innings jump from the 60 game season and just the workload that's going to be required to make up the gap, do you find yourself more worried about your handling of 
the starters or the relievers? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that they're, uh, you know, certainly um, you can kind of debate both, but I would say just off the top of my head, Alden, I would be more concerned about uh, the relievers uh, usage being ramped up versus the starter. Now I could just ask a quick follow-up. I know um, Eric asked you about the six-man rotation. How much thought have you given to maybe piggybacking starters this season? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it has to be uh, an exact kind of one follow another guy, um, but that's certainly having guys um, in your pen that can take down two to three to four innings uh, in a certain game is very, very helpful. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.